Iconic. Game one, I did not see what stage we're going to be on. I It will be illuminated in just a second. Starting on PS2, standard to be expected. Uh, but getting right off the bat here, okay. As we, as we look at this, one thing is that Chemix, he can play patient, but for the most part, he likes getting things done. He's not going to run away unless he really feels like that's a necessary thing to do in a matchup. Granted, that this might be that kind of matchup, because look at how much damage Chemix has already taken. That up B singing really hard. Not enough to put him in the ground just yet, but look at the way that Quid is just spacing outside of all of his moves. Even barely being outside of the range of that spin dash, using that long-lasting neutral air. That's a tool we're seeing him use constantly. And right there, it's set up into the Razor Leaf up air. A classic, a tried and true finisher that we've seen Quid do a thousand times. You know, I will say, normally, Sonic is the kind of character where he is one of the best in the game at playing to a lead. But uh, when he starts to fall behind, sometimes he can really struggle to make a difference. That's why a lot of people kind of end up camping Sonic. Uh, so I think it's very commendable that right now, Kamix really putting on the pressure despite how decisive the beginning of the game was. At 139%, this is Quid's Charizard. He might be surviving for a while because of how heavy he is, but based on the way that Kamix is chasing him down, I don't know if that's the case. Although, this is, he's at 76. He's at death percent from about, you know, 70% of Charizard's moveset here. Ooh. Ooh. What, you're not going to spring the, uh, the, the, the side B? I mean, he cleans up the stock soon thereafter with a uh, forward tilt, but come on. That was the coward's way out. Taking another stock. That up B, it's just so powerful, and Quid knows how to link into it. Okay, uh, uncharacteristically, I would call it a dropped combo, but it feels like when Quid is in that situation, he throws out the move specifically so that even if it doesn't connect, he has the positioning to find another hit immediately afterwards. That's how he's managed to already lap Kamex in percent here. And oh, that late neutral air normally is such a good. Oh, <laughs> oh, man, that was honestly a great call out from Kamex. In that tech situation, so many people will tech roll in because they want to get away from the ledge of the stage. So, you know, that's sort of the thing that Quid was trying to actually punish. Great up smash, going to be taking the stock right there. For one thing, like, Sonic doesn't necessarily have that many just straight up anti-air options, especially, you know, considering the fact that, uh, you know, Pokemon Trainer has decent range, both with Charizard's moves and Ivy Source. The fact that he found that up smash, kind of a call out, and oh, what a switch. But now with these to quit at low percent, I don't know if you want to beat Charizard. He does have one of the better recoveries. <gasps> if that forward smash had connected, that would have been absolutely devastating. Kamex at 152%. He has all of the rage on him right now. I think we actually saw the beginnings of a flare blitz, but interrupted all of a sudden 94% onto Quid. I don't know if he does anything. He had no more jumps. No way to get back to stage. And that a gimp with 152% on his body. <laughs> Staying alive, Kamex takes game one. In terms of a tone set, what can we gather from the nature of the push and pull of that last match? One thing is that it feels like Quid in the neutral and overall in terms of punish game has kind of been... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know we saw him die a very low percent in that last stock, but for the most part, it's been consistently really good. So... Uh, I'm going to stop for just a second because he started off the Squirtle and instantly switched to Ivysaur. Now, those among you who maybe doubt Quid would think, oh, he wanted to switch to Ivysaur at the select screen but forgot to. Uh, but I actually say he went to, to use the switch as a bait at the beginning of the game. All right, this game, you know, I was, gonna, I was saying how Quid in the neutral was really commanding, but maybe that win, the fact that he managed to take it, is giving Kamex a lot of 
just look at the energy he has. Oh, and look at that energy snuffed out like a candle. An overextension, a single overextension from Kamix gets him killed at a disgustingly low percent. And not only not only does that really bad because now he has to, you know, manage to get this comeback stock, but also he was running, he was doing really good. Running high, getting crazy combos. And because he lost that stock to an overextension off stage, that's the sort of thing that can really cut a person's momentum short. And oh man, the Zard is living, surviving, taking lives. Another stock on quit is at 187. And honestly, he feels pretty dang healthy. Oh, he was reading an air dodge in. Kamex didn't give it to him. And I guess that was, you know, Quid was due for an overextension himself. Uh, but at this point, I'd say he can definitely afford that. 43% on Kamex in the last stock. See what he can actually do with this opening. That's the first opening that Quid has given him in a while. And, oh, man. Well, no way. No way. Everybody's fine. Somehow nobody died. <laughs> I'm liking the disadvantage from Kamex right now. The way that he's mixing up his recoveries with these high, low uh, spin dashes to get back to the stage. It's really good, but... I mean, disadvantage improving is definitely, it, it, it's, it can help him out. And I will say that if you remember last game, like if he takes his stock right now, he is still in a better position than he was in last game. Oh, that is not death. Great use of the side B right there. Fourth throw taking, yeah. All right, so Quinn responding with a, uh, a brutal statement right there. You know, Kamix, that's the sort of thing where it's like, Kamix, yeah, you took game one. But let's see you take a, a game two. That was absolutely commanding. Granted, beginning of it looked really good for Kamix, but <laughs> when he needed to get the kill, when, it, when he needed to actually finish the job, he didn't have the heart to do it. And by the heart, I mean like an F smash read. All right, getting into game three here. We have one more. Things are tied up. And uh, this is a little bit more of the the quid form that I remember. 91% off the Kamex. That was pretty much off of just a single neutral win. And I like that air dodge off stage. All right. Mm, I don't know how much I like it anymore. Oh, the idea behind it was sound. But then the, uh, the, the, the second part to that is... Now you are off stage, limiting your resources against Quinn's IV sword. And look at the pressure, man. There's no way that's safe. The corner, not safe. The platforms, not safe. Center stage is honestly doesn't even feel safe. The way that Quinn is just abusing the range of his character. I love that baiting him into the ledge roll with that razor leaf. And the uh, the end lag on it is deceptively low. That's how he was able to continue that combo. Kamek still hasn't found a way to really not only even up the stock counts, there's even up anything. Oh, the emotional damage, the turmoil that Kamek is experiencing right now. I'll remind you, he won game one. Granted, you know, it was a clutch comeback. But uh, this is not looking like that kind of game right here. Absolute dominance. Oh, I thought that was going to end it. Oh, but it might still. He's not out of the woods yet. Kamix getting back down to the ground. A whipped grab from Quid is going to put him off stage. And did you see? He delayed the tether recovery in order to not get hit by that spring. Great awareness. And now he has Zard. We've seen how this character can be... Hard to kill, but a great call out with that up smash. Kamek still alive in this game. It's going to be a real tough time for him. You know, this is best three out of five. He made it all the way to winner's final, so he does have that at his disposal. But, man, the way that Quid is playing right now, this is supposed to honestly be a good matchup for Sonic. Doesn't feel like it at the moment. Oh! <gasps> At a disadvantage. That's something you. I, I gotta say, Quid's IV sword. Normally, that's widely regarded to be. Grabbed him. 
He grabbed him for the kill. That pivot grab was sublime. I don't know how he did that. That was incredible. The timing, the spacing, that was just immaculate. Quid is uh, is looking in top form right now. That game one was a little bit sloppy, and he took the time to correct what he needed to. The punishes, the way that he's abusing the tiny weaknesses in Sonic's kit. I mean, it speaks volumes. Am I about to be joined? Not quite yet. Yo, yo, yo. There it is. Let's go. We got winners finals. Did you see the end of that? He got scooped up and I up. No, that was there. incredible. <laughs> Wait, which scoop are you talking about? He he uh, he grabbed them and then up yeah, threw yeah. him for the yeah, go. Yeah. Off of the spin dash. Oh, yeah. I assume that was a cancel spin dash and not that he... It wasn't like follow through. He, was, he, he canceled it, jumped in front of him, and got grabbed. Is that what happened? I think so. I don't know. I thought that was a hitbox. Like, and he just spaced I think he just like grabbed the hitbox, yeah? Yeah, I think that's because, like, that pivot grab is kind of disjointed. Mm -hmm. Hard to say, though. Um, oh, oh, the catch. Just a nice nice little lead for Kamex here. He's still very healthy. And that's also, he hadn't gone for that at all previously. And definitely quick, not expecting that insane burst that Sp Sonic does have at his disposal. This is really good. That was, that was two Pokemon switches. He knew he wanted to get off Charizard and put on enough percent that immediately you got him off of Squirtle and punished both Pokemon switches. Man, this is the sort of thing where now Quinn has to figure out a way to enter this stock really quickly. That's something he's been doing a lot of, is using that neutral it's so long lasting in the hitbox. is actually able to decently challenge Sonic Spin Dash. I think a lot of a lot of characters started to realize that Spin Dash is uh, challengeable with Nair. You don't try to like get to, to Spin Dash, you let it come to you and you challenge it. F Smash traded. But you try to like let it like come to you and then time the the interception like as he's landing on you. Now I, will I know Yoshi Nair also does the same thing. Really? That's mm -hmm. shocking. <laughs> um, but uh, so this is a really interesting state of the game right now. So Kamex is looking for a kill. You know, he has the lead 123% onto uh, Quid. It's, he should be at death percent, but only do a couple of Sonic's moves. That was really good use of Bullet Seed. He knew he was going to try to go past him with the ledge pressure. He didn't go for the jump up air. Got uh, landing nared on it. Okay, the spacing. The spacing so good. And that's also spacing with Ivy. So that character does not have good aerial mobility. That had to be like thought out well in advance in terms of when he would start drifting back. And we've seen how Charizard's recovery can be abused by Kamex. And that should be it. Back through at the ledge. Zarb, yep, not big yep. enough to survive that one. All right, patience for Quid. Is, oh, <laughs> he needs to take as little damage as possible. Because, uh, honestly, more important than getting the kill is just not getting hit too much. Because then if Kamex wants to, he could play to a lead. Yep. Nice little clanking hitbox to put him back on ledge. Oh, he went for the F smash again. He's been going for that a lot. And I mean, it has worked out, but Kamex definitely has picked up on it. And as a result, he's getting hit. Like, that exchange cost him like 30% or something. And he has to, he's switching to Charizard. He's really trying to I find a way to end this stop. I don't know about switching to Zard in this situation. I mean, and I lied. <laughs> but switching to Zard in that situation is like not the easiest to keep damage off. Like, you know you're looking for a kill, and then not getting damage racked up on you as Zard is going to be rough. I think it's telling that he went for back air specifically with Zard. That perhaps he was think he was realizing that Kamex was occupying this space that you know Ivysaur just couldn't reach, mm -hmm. and so switched to Zard. And you know that he's been liking oh, to go to that exact Oh, he fell out of the zone. up air. Porter, I'm not going to take. Oh, that actually does. Wow. I didn't think it was going to take it just yet. But yeah, I, he yeah. fell out of the up air. He was like up air like three quarters way up the screen. I think the up air would have killed him raw. But he fell out of it. He I mean, that's the uh, the, the price of playing Sonic. <laughs> Sometimes your moves don't work. It's like it's like a little extra RNG on top of the character, you know? Pokemon this is He's starting game Ivysaur. Five. I don't know if you saw. Hmm? Starting Ivysaur. Uh, yeah, he for I, I thought... 
he was specifically. I mean, okay, so we started Squirtle before and then switched instantly yeah. um, as the game started. So I think he just forgot to do that last time. So yeah, he's been doing that. That's his intention from the beginning. Uh, We've seen no Squirtle in this match. I think Squirtle's uh, hitboxes are a little too stubby to contest with uh, Sonic's like drive-by speed. And also. You know, one of the best parts about Squirtle is his ground movement. Yeah. But what is ground movement in the face of a spin dash? Uh-huh. <gasps> That's mad good. Alive? He's going to have to... He has to switch his hard. He's not coming back from that. Oh. Instantly switched to Squirtle at the very end. So that he'd get Ivysaur right off the rip. But it didn't matter. He ended up landing on the spring anyway. All of that invincibility just completely gone. This is a beautiful start for Kamex. I want to, like, really think about this. Did Kamex, he's... Has he won an encore? No way. No. He, and right now, this is not. This is, this is the opponent that would stop it. Yeah. Weed is a player that has time and that error. Gorgeous. This might be a small oh, encore, but this is still this is still Quid. Have yeah. to get through Quid to win this. I mean, listen, 90% of encores, regardless if there are like 20 or 70 people, you're gonna have to face Quid in grand yep. finals. So. <laughs> Right now, Kamex actually doing it well. 149%. I don't know why he's approaching right now, honestly. I'm pretty sure the last time they played, uh, Quid won in game five. And I want to say it was Loser's final. I. How did that. <laughs> how is that how Quid took the stop? <laughs> why, of all things, did spamming stop dodge in the middle of the stage do it for him? Yeah, you make, you make the Sonic think about, like, uh, double check his trigger so he doesn't swing by you on a, on a spot dodge. He got hit by it, too, didn't he? Yeah, he no, he got, he got hit by it, but it was like a jank box. Oh, that was so good. He was recognizing the air dodges, and that time really uh, didn't commit to any move so that he could react properly to it. Oh, that's a scary situation to be in, but Kamex has already been burned by going off stage and overextending in that way, so he is not trying to uh, go underneath there to challenge Quid. Yeah, I like the idea of doing uh, higher pressure situations in game five when you're the confident one. Raise Leaf up air, gonna take it. Man, Quid's disadvantage with Ivysaur is just, I, I don't think there's a single Pokemon trainer player in the world who can compete with the way his Ivysaur takes disadvantage and turns it into so many opportunities. That was, he was in disadvantage and he gets this neutral there, gets 29%. Neutral into forward air was pretty good, pretty good con uh, conversion. I love the idea that crouch. The ducking, yeah. I yeah. like the ducking. For the shortening sure. is her box by just enough that a lot of the moves that... Uh, he makes... Oh. No, he doesn't. I think even if he angled it, he would have been a little bit too low. He and pulled the trigger a little too early on the tether and got uh, the spring landing on him mid-tether. Yeah, he's... On a, honestly, he's been doing a good job of having that not happen to him. So the fact that in game five of all times, that's when he just is a little bit too quick. You can see that maybe the pressure is starting to get to him. Oh, no. He's quite. He's still alive. 90% is not a whole lot, but... Ooh! I like the tether angle there. To is that going to be it? Oh, wow. Oh, that what was, a call that, out. That was such a call out. He hard committed to, I'm going to pop you up and you're going to do something defensive here. And land on the F smash. And the F smash was 